What is up, football fans? But most importantly, USFL fans, welcome back to the first episode in a long time, episode 31 of USFLA. As always, it's me, Ace, joined by my wonderful co-host, Webb, and our wonderful producer who is off screen right now, KB. We are so happy to be back. Webb, we back. Why are we back? First of all, first of all I want to say congratulations to you and KB. Uh, you were buried, uh, what, I'm two married. weeks ago, a week and a half ago? Two weeks ago, um, almost two weeks ago. So two weeks on Sunday. You should know the days, man. Like, you, like yeah, I, I said, I two weeks ago days. on Sunday. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Number right. fifth, I got married. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Thank you. And your mother-in-law, KB. Uh, it seemed like the wedding went great, and you guys look great. So, congratulations. Yeah, it, it went off without a hitch. It was great. It was in Austin, Texas. Um, it was interesting seeing both sides of my family all in one place, and with claire's family and now it's all one big family and it's really cool i'm excited and now that all the craziness all the the bachelor party the wedding the preparation the stress it's all gone it's all done i'm ready to jump back in and do this show with my people so let's go we're back what's your life news other than growing a beard since the last time we shot the show yeah it's winter it's my winter coat um really not much we're going on a cruise tomorrow or saturday so Oh, I'm, ex you? I'm excited. So spending Thanksgiving away, you know, two kids kind of, I'm not, I'm not as exciting as you are. Like I did, I did all that stuff 13 years ago. I'm a little slower right yeah, now. I went on a cruise a couple months back. I love cruises, dude. Yeah. But I love them. They're but, uh, fun. Yeah. It's our first cruise. I've always gone to resorts. So Ooh. it's going to be a lifestyle. Yeah, so. Well, with kids, it should be a blast. When you don't have kids, you, it's kind of like. I don't know. A lot of the things are for kids. Yeah. But it's a great time. I enjoy it. A lot of food. I'm just excited for Shaq's Chicken. Uh, this this uh, ship has a restaurant that Shaq owns. And if you know anything about Shaq, no way. Any, anything that he touches turns to gold. Pretty great. Like he doesn't make Probably bad decisions, bad business decisions, it seems like. So I'm excited. That is fantastic. I'm very happy for you. Um, great things happening in our lives. And hopefully, I'm a little sick right now, so if I sound a little nasally, that's why. Uh, I haven't been able to go over to my wonderful mother-in-law's house for Sunday dinner, so hoping that I can get over that quickly. But now that we have established, we are back. Yep. Uh, now oh. we've talked about some life news. It's been awesome. Life is good. Life is great. Now we move to our USFL lives, which we try to keep out of our personal lives as much as possible. But that's hard. So, <laughs> first of all, free agency. How, what is your take on free agency been as a whole? I guess I loved it at the beginning. Yeah. Um, that, that quick action. Then it seems like it is taking, it's hit the brakes a little bit just yeah. because of the merger news. I think, you know, you touched it on your show. Mark Thompson oh, yeah. is one of them. Like, I think Boogie, I know, is another one. They're trying to. They're going to decide after this, whatever happens with the merger, and then after. I know the the unions meeting in Atlanta this week, um, so uh, you got all that, and I I think if you go back to last year, some of the biggest free agent signings happened in January. Ruben Foster, uh, Bailey Gaither, yeah. I, I like it happens in January, so we're just in a lull right now. But the beginning of free agency, I loved it, man. It felt like. It felt like the NFL when free agency was like boom, boom, boom. This team, this team, this team. Now we get a couple that trickle in. But yeah. what's yeah. your take? It's a little quiet over there in Texas, so it's incredibly quiet. I think, like you said, the merger news really slowed things down. You know, I talked to Lionel Vitel, the GM of the Gamblers, and he admitted. He said, "Yeah." He goes, "I have stalled. I stopped once the merger happened." Uh, he said, "He's he's looking and he's still scouting." But he's not signing or doing anything until we find it out because my let's be real, the gamblers might not exist. So he could put in a ton of time, he could sign all these players, and then it means nothing because suddenly the team is dissolved and he's out of a job, he's back into retirement, so he'd be fine. But then he did all that work and all those players get excited for um, you know, their next opportunity and it doesn't come. So I kind of do appreciate that he's taking that because he's not getting you know, people's hopes up. Like he's not signing people saying, oh, you're going to come and make $78,000 and play professional football. So that's cool. 
but you know it's the gamblers are less confident you know i would say the gamblers and and what the breakers maybe generals they're the ones that were less confident that they're 100 going to be there uh i feel good about the maulers you know the ponies dude they're signing i got it right here i counted for kb i think since september 1st they signed 21 people which is by far the most so I, they're they feel confident you talk about your confidence with the gamblers. I th- I think you need to be confident with the gamblers playing because the, when you looked at the USFL statements mm-hmm. um, and the XFL statements, the USFL was business as usual, like regardless of what's going on. While you watch the XFL and it's a letter of intent they're signing players. They're not like signing them to real contracts. So like that True. vibe tells me that like you're the eight of the USFL I know everyone uses the word merger, and that's the hot topic we talk about all the time. It's it's, it's almost like we're kind of taking you in, like yeah. we're going to adopt you. What's the word so, for that we're consuming them. That's not the right yeah. word. Yeah, and you were spot on with that blind side from Xander. A co- like Dude, this is what it is. Months ago, I said like, they're we never need to gonna cut merge. that, clip it, post it everywhere when it gets announced because that's what it seems like outside of your gamblers. Every USFL team is active and signing them they're to real contract. Hundred percent. Uh, oh. The Philadelphia Stars, who is another yeah. team that people thought would be on the chopping block. Uh, I have it right here. For anybody wondering why I keep looking off to what, the screen left, uh, I have a list. I went through I went through everybody's Twitter, and I put together a list of all the players that were signed by each USFL team, other than the Maulers, because I know Webb's on top of it. I don't even need to steal his thunder. How many players they have signed si- since September 1st? Because yeah. uh, early in September, that was when we got the merger news. So since then, I wanted to see the activity. 21 players for the Stallions. You know, they're confident. They're two-time champions. They're not going in the merger. They're not, they're not going to lose that. But the Stars, they've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, if you count, claimed off waivers. So 15 new players since September 1st. The Stars feel confident. They just did a huge trade. I would yep. say it's the biggest trade that we've seen in the USFL where they traded a good, Brown. De- decent defensive tackle, and Cody Brown, who is yeah. a borderline all-USFL safety. You know, he yeah. knocked Isaiah Henney's tooth out, and now he's traded away because they want offensive linemen. That's another point that I wanted to make. Do you see any trends with the free agency signings that have happened so far with the teams? It's just, the Stars are rebuilding an offensive line. Right. Oh yeah. Sean are. Brown. Sean to. Brown goes to the Maulers. They trade two players for just offensive line. Yep. Stallions. What was their strength last year? The offensive line. Offense they trade away those and they, two. And they picked. Well, they picked up five. So they had basically <laughs> two offensive lines. Uh, Luke Miller over at what Pro the Football Newsroom. Newsroom. He had put out that the trade made sense because the Stallions have been just collecting offensive linemen like Infinity Stones. And they had 10 guys that could potentially start in the USFL. So why not dump off two and reinforce positions that they didn't know if they were going to get guys back in? You know, they're secondary. That's the, probably the second most important behind uh, offensive line. You're secondary because otherwise you can get eight up. So they reinforced with Cody Brown. Then they were able to go get Lorenzo Burns back and re-sign him. Dude, they're playing chess, not checkers. I... I'm not a ponies fan. I'm the biggest proponent against them, you know, self-made jockeys, whatever. But dude, they are killing it right now. So not only did they trade for those two good possible starter offensive linemen, but they also picked up Jordan Steckler, who for some reason, you know, I'm all in on Lionel Vital, but holy crap, he came in and he dropped a borderline NFL offensive lineman. And like whoa um you know our offensive line coach you know he's he's moved on to new opportunities and he texted me when that happened and he was like i cannot believe that they just got rid of steckler like this makes no sense i was like dude it makes no sense either we also got rid of brandon hitner so the fact that the stars what was the one thing holding them back last year offensive line you know their defense was playing better and then now the gamblers who had one of the best offensive lines are in shambles. I don't know if we have any at this point. So, but then you look at other teams. You have the Generals, 
who did they poach from the Maulers? Charles Baldwin. Man. Yeah. Man. Let, let's not talk about it. Olive leaving is a giant hole, not just because he was the biggest guy in the league, but, you know, his, his paw, right, sticking up against EJ Perry in the North Championship won them that game. So losing Olive, they re-signed Mafa. They got they re-signed Toby Johnson. Like their defensive line is going to be nasty. The Generals are the dark horse next year for coming in last this season, looking pretty abysmal all around. Other than their defense had what four or five pretty legitimate dudes. You know, you had yeah. Chris Orr, you had Mata Afa, you had um, what's Toby. his name there? Safety. Well, Toby Johnson, beast. Luani and Luani. Uh, DJ Daniel, who resigned. Yeah, and then the DJ corner. Daniel. All, so they had USFL. like yeah. they had some all USFL and they had some really bright spots on their defense, but then they had some glaring holes on their defense. And then their offense was just pretty terrible. The one thing that they did lose was Cam Echo's looper, which is crazy to me. Why you don't offer because I don't know if this is fully public knowledge, but each team has a little bit of a nest egg that they get to use to give a little bit extra money to certain players to try and incentivize resigning, you know, just like a signing bonus. Why you don't use that on Cam Eccles Looper? I don't know. Because other than him, they're... They lost Trey Williams. Williams. They lost Trey Williams. Yeah. Trey Williams to the Maulers. You guys really were just take, like exchanging blows there, which is crazy. Yeah. Well, the whole North, man. Uh, the North rivalries. I know everyone talks about the yeah. South, but the North, it's it seems a little personal. Quietly. The way the free agency... Yeah. Because the Maulers have a player from the Generals, the Stars, and the Panthers. They've they've yeah. taken talent from every single. Oh, dirty! Y'all was <laughs> dirty. But we've all done. Look it. We've at, all yeah. Done. Oh, dude, honest. no. Look at look at the Generals. You know, you have Eric Berrier, who's a re-signing. What he was a mid-season pickup last year. Yeah. Um, then you have Ethan Westbrooks. So yeah. they're getting you know some fairly Ethan, untapped we, talent. We want to talk about Ethan Westbrooks. Remember, he started with the Maulers. Got yes. caught. Then went to the but, Panthers, had a, like a, won an award. <laughs> that yes. ends up in New Jersey. So like, yeah, it, he's he's been around the whole North. Um, and then, dude, Joe Walker. So he left. Uh, <laughs> Mark Gilbert's your, pocket. He left Mark Gilbert's pocket and walked into <laughs> New Jersey's locker room. So they took Joe Walker. They took Ethan Westbrook. Yeah. They took Eric Berrier. Gosh, they look like the Panthers all of a sudden. Then they go, they get Charles Baldwin out of the Maulers. Yep. Dude, Olive Sagapolu, that's a huge one. They get Toby, yep. Hercules, Matafa, DJ Daniel back. They look good. Like, on paper, the generals look but, much better. Than but who is taking snaps? That's always been the question with that team. Um, DeAndre is still a free agent. I know Barrier is there, but, like, he didn't see the field. Loletta was there. and they I don't know why Liletta. he didn't. The fact that he didn't see the field at all. Yeah, or was active makes me think: Are they fully on board there? Uh, are they I waiting they for? Are. Remember, they made that move for Pro Cup right at the, right before training camp. So are they waiting until like the Canadian League to get the to fill that that spot? What team did that, Pro that, Cup go back onto up north in the CFL? I think he went to the Blue Bombers, right? I don't know if he went back to the Blue Bombers. Hey, they're in the uh, what Grey Cup this weekend. I'm excited to watch that. I believe it's Saturday night. Uh, excited to watch that but yeah i i don't know i think eric barrier may have been that they aren't comfortable the way that the panthers were the way that uh the maulers were in season one to throw a quarterback out there after a week or two of learning the playbook i think they really wanted to stick to the three guys that they had they dropped dakota pru cup they picked up eric barrier and i think that they wanted to stick with coach riley really trusted laletta and johnson to run the playbook so now that we're going to get an offseason, they re-signed him. I mean, he re-signed. He had to re-sign after the season because he was a two-year guy and he was a free agent. So they obviously wanted him back. I think if he gets, you know, the whole offseason talking to, what, Coach Riley here and there maybe, and then he gets Coach a Smith. camp with them. Yeah. yeah, dude, I think he could be their guy. I think Eric Verrier could be, he could be legit. I think he could be good. But then let's see who else do we have that was poached. Um, the the one thing I do want they have fifty players. Remember last year they were extremely aggressive. The camp number is fifty eight, so they still have wiggle room. And that that's the thing I'm the noticing about players, all these teams. From last all year. these teams, what's that? 
I think the generals learned from last year that that wasn't a good look. Uh, they were getting called out by two very rowdy uh, show hosts. I don't know who those guys were, but. <laughs> but so the stars have the most players right now, 52. Yes. That still gives them room for six more spots. And the gamblers have the least with uh, 43. So they got 15 spots. You got a lot of spots. to But fill. do you wait until the future contracts? And now you got guys that are on the cusp and you, and you that's wait what for I'm, that. That's what I said yeah. on my show. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's what, what the, I think the gamblers are doing. And. You know, you got that big fish out there, Mark Thompson. What is he going to do? Because oh he he changes your whole mindset. If he comes back to the gamblers, you're building an offense around him. If every he leaves, tweet, every you have tweet to. Uses me. <laughs> I did my deep dive he's into best... Mark Thompson, but it's. He's the best follow every... in the league. Oh, far. absolutely the best follow. Calling <laughs> Caillou, like J. Mark Smith, Caillou and stuff. And then, let, let, wait, while we're talking about Caillou. Um, what are they going to do to replace Magoo? That's the MVP. I know Jamar won the championship. They got Jamar year. back, well, but listen. but the thing is, they won not despite Jamar, but Jamar didn't win them games. Alex Magoo, me and you were there in the championship. Alex Magoo games. won them games and was the best won. player. Yes, so but now they're missing that and Jay Sternberger and Deion well, Kane. Was, mm, Jace might come back. I feel that coming. But what was the Best plays. Who was who elevated Jamar Smith the most? It's season one. Who elevated him? Yes. What do you mean, Marlon Victor Williams? Bolden. Victor oh. Bolden. Uh, Victor, Victor Bolden. Victor Bolden yeah. and Jamar Smith were electric because yeah. Victor is great at finding space, and Jamar yeah. is good at you know running out, throwing balls on the run. You know, him and Alex Magoo are similar. It's just Alex Magoo has more of an it factor, but. Alex Magoo last season didn't have Victor Bolden. He was he was making receivers that really weren't that amazing look better because he was that good. Now they have Victor Bolden back. He went, he tried the XFL. They didn't really use him. So we came back to the Holtz offense. He's back with Jamar Smith. They bump, bump up their freaking defense. They got their entire offensive line back and more. They poached Neville Clark from uh, the, the Breakers. breakers. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. To get, let's see, to get Matt Caskey, the guard back, to get Cole Cabral back. Uh, they picked up Christian Delaro from Illinois. Oh, Cole Schneider's back. Bo Scarborough, CJ Marable. They have all the pieces to three P, and it's a little bit scary. You know, they they got Cody Brown, and then what was it? Yesterday they re-signed Lorenzo Burns. They're a scary team. They are genuinely a scary team to look at on paper, and we've seen them on the field. And they've only lost what three games total. Yeah. So, oh, they're they're definitely the class. I I just I don't know if that I could trust that Jamar is going to do the same things that Magoo that won no, games. They're like, their their defense struggle. Luke Miller would tell you their defense struggle at the beginning of the season, and Magoo yeah. was carrying them. I remember the Maulers game. Magoo was running around for fifteen seconds. And found a receiver. Jamar is not going to do that. Over, dude, it's crazy. <laughs> J- no, Jamar but I do believe. Yeah. And now, the, the, now it's fourth down, and they're not scoring a touchdown, and mm-hmm. they're not winning that game. So yes, but I do believe that their defense will be better this year. It should be. I I love Tillman. Tillman Tillman's one of my favorite, uh, most underrated player. I'm surprised oh. he hasn't got an NFL. Andre shot. Tillman. Yeah. Beast. All right, let's go look. Uh, we look at the Panthers. Who have they signed? They got back TJ Carter. They got back Frank Ginda. They got back Corey Rahman. They got Vantrell McMillan back, Deshaun White. You know, these guys that went up and they got shots and they were showing out and looking pretty good in preseason. Dude, what if uh, they don't get a future deal out of Levi Bell and he comes back to the Panthers? Yeah. That defense is scary. You know, they get Marcus Sims back. Uh, quick name their quarterback. Samson Naku out of BYU. Quick, quick name their name their quarterback. Dude, it's gonna be what's his face. <laughs> the end of the season. They only have one quarterback, Lewerke, right now. Who? Oh, they, yeah. I've they that guy. One Love is gone. EJ Perry went to the NFL. He might come Dude, back. EJ Perry was EJ the Perry guy. I if, think if he comes did. back, if he comes back, that that changes their whole offensive. Sure. I mean, their whole offseason outlook. Lewerke. Yeah. From Michigan State, but and then they have Samson Nakua, dude. Isn't that Puka Nakua's brother? It is, and a former Mauler. He was cut. Yes, uh, he week is. Two last year. So. His photo is literally of him in a Mauler's uniform with a bunch yeah. of underneath. Yeah. So, 
yes, I think they they're doing pretty well in free agency. I think getting back the big pieces on the defensive line are huge. Uh, here, real quick, I like the Showboats. They've gotten some good pieces back. Getting Jordan Ferguson back after he went to the NFL. Well, they he need a head NFL coach, right? Several times. They need a head coach. They need a head coach. But so, I don't. I think it will be better. You know, Todd Haley. He had his moments where you were like, "This guy's legit," but a lot of problems, dude, with Todd Haley. You know, you have the huge blowouts to well, the gamblers weren't spying. Italians. On we were not spying on him. But like the forty, what was it, forty-two to two game? Yeah. You know? And then just some things you're hearing out of the locker room. What I am confused about, they released Quan Stallworth a starting offensive lineman. They released Juwan Washington again. They released DJ Myers, I guess. And then, like, I don't know. They're making some questionable moves, and you wonder how much um, what Todd Haley actually had to do with that. But then, because a lot of what I heard was that he wasn't even at practice a lot of the times, so I don't know how much hands-on he was anyway. So now they're going to get a new coach and I think it can only get better. So, you know, and maybe they have Mark Thompson. So who knows? Yeah, they've they've got nine more spots. They're at 49 right now yes. to um defensive philosophy. If they keep Carnell Lake as the D coordinator or if he gets promoted to head coach, um their defense will be fine. They're missing John Atkins. Big John still hasn't resigned, which is maybe he's waiting like Boogie. Yeah, but I, maybe I, he's just waiting. Um, I, I can't imagine it. them not offering him a trade. I mean, a contract. I, no, I can't he's imagine. Definitely, I he's definitely been offered. I would assume. How about Big John? How about Big John replaces Big Oliva? <laughs> Just throwing that out there. I'm fishing for that one. But uh, the the new head coach is definitely going to have some input on the final nine spots. Um, yeah. especially if it's an offensive coach. Obviously, if if they keep Carnell Lake in some kind of role, the defense is set. So the, I, w I would imagine that they're saving those last nine spots majority for offense. So Derek Dillon's yeah. coming back. Uh, they lost Papale, right? Yeah, Papale yeah. left. Yes, so that's the last time, last team that we haven't talked about was the Breakers. Yeah. They took Marcus Baugh, who was pretty good over with the Panthers. Uh, we saw some, what, north-south trading there, not trading, poaching. Vinny Papali coming over from the showboats, which is interesting because Papali was kind of a staple of both the bandits and then the showboats. He jumped ship. They re-signed Adonis Alexander. They get Lee Morris back. Cam Eccles Looper is a huge poach. Uh, Reggie Howard is back. Jared Fernandez and Vontae Diggs both signed at the same time as you knew they were going to. Uh, I don't know. The big question mark for them is quarterback because MBT immediately was released from the team. So that was kind of. And crazy. the report today is that he's up in Toronto right now. So it's not like he just retired. It The report today on Twitter and I don't, or X, whatever you want to call was it. It, today? Um, it was today. What, what did they say? They just said he's throwing up in Toronto. I don't know what that means. He's up in Toronto throwing he's the pick up. So it doesn't even matter. But. Yeah, but it, they could be thinking about him coming back so i'm i'm just saying uh made but more they money made up that there. replacement what's that he made more money up there i mean yeah. he said at the beginning of the season that he was coming down for one season to try and get back into american football in the nfl uh he did not get even remotely a shot in the nfl which is kind of weird especially this season in the nfl where you're seeing a lot of quarterbacks go down you know i would have it would have been exciting to see my vikings when Kirk cousins blew his achilles to say oh we're working out mbt no workouts no nothing so that was strange, but they do have two great talents. They have um, Akil Glass and Davis Cheek. Thank you. Yeah, and I mean everybody. Akil Glass is a huge crowd favorite. Davis Cheek, he's talented. So I think they're okay. They just they have younger quarterbacks now, which is fine. And then the last team that we haven't talked on much is the Gamblers. We released what so many people. We ever, we ever talked about the Maulers. We haven't talked about the Maulers, man. We talked about the Maulers. Name we talked about the Maulers because tons of your players are getting poached. So yeah, that's it. A bunch that's of it. them. That's it. Well, yeah, let you... me touch on the gamblers really quick. We dropped Terry Wilson, Brandon Barnes, Malcolm Washington, Andrew Soro, 
Tyler Polka, Isaiah Lewis, Brandon Hittner, and Christian Scully. I don't get it. Christian Scully was retiring from football, uh, so that's something. Brandon Barnes was also retiring. He's coaching, so that was okay. But Malcolm Washington, Terry Wilson, Andrew Soro, Tyler Polka, like these, these are hits, man. These are guys who have been on the team, and it sucks to see them go. And uh, they didn't even know that they got cut. They found out when it came out on Twitter. So th- it's all a little disappointing. Uh, I, but we I, have signed some good. Dudes. It's the hard reset of 2024 for for any team. Yeah, your coach came in real late. You got a brand new GM. Um, the philosophy changed. I, you're you're in transition, and it's a hard reset. What what if a you go into the? Changed. Yeah, a lot of the coaches are changing. Um, so it's a hard reset. He did bring back Montel Cozart, Kenji Bahar, Anthony Ratliff Williams, Jeremiah Johnson, Isaiah Chambers, and then he signed a couple pretty good DBs, man. Getting Justin Ford, which is going to bring me to my next point after we talk about the Maulers. Dude, Justin Ford was a lockdown man corner in Montana. At, at Montana. He was crazy. Go Grizzlies, dude. So I was so excited. When we drafted him, I was like, this is the one guy that I really, really want us to sign quickly. We didn't get to sign him. We signed um, you know, a defensive tackle out of Oklahoma that we drafted, but he did well too. But then Elijah Rogers at a year school, Clemson. Uh, we got, dude, we got some good players. So our secondary, I'm hopeful about, uh, but otherwise, like you said, we have the least amount of players on our roster. We have a lot of holes to fill and I'm hoping that it's once futures deals are being placed, the guys who aren't getting futures deals that are literally practice squad players on NFL teams, that kind of talent. I'm hoping that that's who he's going for, especially because this is a guy who literally was just the head of college scouting for the Dallas Cowboys. I say that camp that practice squad is a big thing to watch going into the future deals going into the offseason once uh the playoffs hit in the nfl so that's my take on it i'm not worried yet uh once the nfl season ends if we're not starting to see some signings i'm worried and then i will talk about it on my show but last team i didn't have them on my list maulers what do you feel about the maulers i know oh, you i love a- i love the offseason man deandre overton <laughs> over the top right Are we uh, offensive line help with ham Sean Brown, yeah. or Daniel at linebacker. Still don't know what's going to go on with who's going to replace Olive. Boogie's still technically a free agent. Boogie's um, coming Tez, back, man. Boogie. Tez is still not signed, but they have a replacement in Dorian or Daniel. What's that? Is Ruben Foster coming back? Ruben Foster signed for another year. And then okay. Mark Gilbert replacement. I think there's a replacement on the roster already. Fernando Jordan, one of our, one of our draft picks. That, that's me personally. Because he he signed week nine and was playing by week ten, That's like crazy. in their biggest game, he's already out there. So obviously something has clicked with him. Uh, yeah. But Trey Williams, man, come on! That's a big signing to get him and with a no new offensive Rocha. coordinator. Yeah. You're like let's let's remember the Breakers' offense in 2022, right? With Noel Mazon, right? Sloter was there, but T.J. Logan, remember T.J. Logan coming out of the backfield, catching the ball, scat back. You were boom, so boom. high on that guy, and he was gone after what? Three games. Yeah, it, he got hurt, and he's never played football again. But Trey Williams fits that mold with Perfect. the Rodney Smiths and Mad- Madre London, which I know that's your fantasy nightmare. But two years in a row, I drafted Madre. <laughs> Why? But, Why Madre? But they're running back. Their offense has gotten better, and as long as they fill the holes, which I trust the defense. If there's defense. anything to trust on that team with that coaching staff, it's a brand new offensive staff, so that that should be exciting. But I think the offense fits Troy Williams perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm drinking the Kool Aid. I've drank the Kool Aid for a year now. So like, hey, it got I'm you. I'm all in. I, I'm gonna steal your line, but I'm all in. It's time to drop the hammer. So I'm ready to go. Yes. So I like the offensive coordinator who is what it's like a verbal agreement right now. He's coming. Yeah. Um, getting, a lot of coaches because of the coaches' yeah. contracts, they end at a certain time, and then they're not really they're part time employees, which. Everyone made a big deal in XFL, and it's like, dude, that like they got to save money. They can't pay you all year and all the time. Pay you all year while you're not there, yeah. uh, doing anything. But I like the offensive coordinator pickup. I like that you have Troy Williams back. You get Madre London back. You coach Trey Williams. No more Garrett Groshek to just ho- hound the ball and run for one yard. I'm sorry, Garrett, you weren't great, but there's a lot to like about 
the Mahler's offense and it's looking up because that team, if it had an offense that could score touchdowns, it was better than the Stallions. Hands down, it was better than the Stallions. It took them, you know, yard and got them to the championship where they almost beat the Stallions one time and then they came into the championship and I mean, they didn't beat them. They didn't score one touchdown. I, I, I actually uh, watched the press conference. It's funny. I, I watched random things. Remember that press conference? We were in that room, right? After the there. championship. Yeah. And Ray was looking like I, I felt like he was staring at me, even though I've never really talked to the man. But I felt like he, he was staring at me. He's like, changes. I actually think you asked the question or loaded. And he's like, changes are going to be made on the offense. And I just felt like it, it, it hit home so he, much. And then, boom. You got Overton. Man, we got a wide receiver that's high, taller than six feet tall. I love Henny. I love Bailey Gaither. Yeah. I love them all. But when you got a six foot four guy coming now on, awesome. on the outside, plus with the Hennies and the Simmons and the, I'd like, man. And then Maddie Saber, like Sal Canilla. Hello. They, they're like best friends. It's yeah. right into that mold with Noel Mazone's offense. I'm excited. But, you know, I drink that yellow I and black Kool Aid. I know you drink the yellow and black Kool Aid. You know, as long as you're not in Jonestown, it's all good. But <laughs> I might be. <laughs> but I like it. Um, it's a it's a little annoying that my team is the one team that's making like zero moves. I have really nothing to to comment on. It was actually kind of nice because I'm dealing with the wedding. I'm dealing with everything. I don't have as much time to do my show, but nothing was happening. So it it wasn't like I was missing covering a lot but of things. Here, here's the thing. Remember Low last year? Low last year when they changed coaches or they didn't have a coach for a while and they weren't signing free agents? He was freaking out, dude. Yeah, but then I'm all not. of a sudden they ended up with MBT. They ended up with West Hills. They ended up with like yeah, bing, 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 bing. Oh, yeah. That was all December, January, February. Yeah, dude. Watch us end up with like Will Greer. That would be crazy. But uh, I'm not. Oh, Chase out. Bryce, right? That's your draft pick out there. Chase Bryce is in the CFL. But no, stupid CFL. But I'm not freaking out. I'm not low last season. Oh my gosh, when they were, he was like, "We don't sign a new coach." Bye, blah blah blah. I'm freaking out, man. I was like, "Calm down, dude." There's a whole off season. It had like three months before the season even started. I was like, "You're fine." But I'm not freaking out. We have our coach. We have our GM. We have enough players to field a team right now. It's just wondering what other moves are going to happen. That's all I'm doing, and I think we're okay. But Another, the last thing I wanted to touch on a free agency before we talk about the merger a little bit and get to KB's blind side was a lot of players. We got the ninth round pick for the Panthers signed. The Showboats had a fifth round pick signed. Uh, the Stars had their eighth round pick signed. Like, what? And then the Gamblers, we had our second round pick signed with Justin Ford. A lot of guys signing from the draft. And that is super exciting. I love seeing that. The draft works. You know, we had players signing immediately after the draft. We had players signing mid-season from the draft. And then now in the offseason, we're seeing a lot of players from the draft sign with their teams. And so it shows that it matters. And, you know, when the draft happened, a lot of people were saying, oh, this is just a formality. They're just trying to drum up, you know, um, excitement. No, now they're actually signing and you're getting it in the players' heads. You're saying, hey, we think you're that kind of guy who's talented enough that if you come to this kind of league, you know, you play in the spring league, you can get back to the NFL. And for guys like Levi Bell and some of these other guys, it's working. So I love to see that. That was the last point I wanted to make was you got some uh, draft picks, college draft picks coming in. You know, they were in the USFL draft, and that's just, that's cool. That's really cool for me. It, 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 it's, it's great, but it goes back to my point that we should have the draft in October, right? Yeah. It, it creates that off season and they already went through the training camps, the NFL training camps. So these kids that are coming out of college last year, like they know where they kind of stand in the football world. If you do it in February, they don't know. They can't sign. Right. Like they, they waited. They Except can. If you go, some of them, some it, of them had. Yeah. Like Trey Con Dorsey did who went to a D one double, you know what I mean? A D two school yeah, and just want an opportunity. Like he knew he wasn't going to get drafted, but if guys like uh chase Bryce, for instance, because that's the first name up popped up he went to a big school he was thinking he might get drafted or get undrafted um a camp invite and everything where, while the season goes and on he did you know he it, got a camp invite and then the cfl offered him money to go play right now so i get it yeah and i i think if you do the draft in october 
we talk about it, right? People talk about it. It gets the name out there during the NFL season. I'm not saying you're going to steal that thunder, but you know what guys aren't in the NFL that just came out of college and you can go draft and you can build your team around it. So the draft actually feels like you just said, yeah, we waited like six months for the Panthers to sign their fifth round draft pick. Yeah. F fans don't want that. So if, if we can do that, in October, and then he signs in, let's say, November, December, going into camp because he knows he's not going to be in the NFL. It's more exciting. It's yeah, it's it, it like just it just keeps you momentum entertained, I guess. So that's yeah. just my. Oh, I totally get that. I totally get that. Uh, I just like that it, it. You know, it was their first iteration, first time trying it. It was awesome. Working. I love it. Yeah, and it's working. I think that's we, uh, the Maulers have three or four on the roster right now. Uh, our first pick, oh, yeah. first round pick, wants to stay with the ref next. See how that's working out for him, and he's coaching at texas state but whatever we, we move on carry on it's been well but now we move on to the thing that everybody wants to talk about i've stayed away from the talks it's a little bit exhausting but now let's exhaust ourselves the usfl xfl merger first of all i'm gonna say it point blank the usfl is in the driver's seat we got a steering wheel hand on the steering wheel and our other hand is on the xfl's lap because we're sweet talking to them and we're like come over here man because you're bankrupt so, like, that's that's how it's going right now, right? That the XFL, they're signing players' intent. USFL literally said, if the merger doesn't happen, be ready for season three. Like, we're not slowing this train down. Love that. Now, the XFL, weird things have been happening. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Danny Garcia, they took XFL off of their socials. They took it off their LinkedIn's. It's weird. And then, what was it, two days ago or yesterday that it came out that they were meeting with senators or something about some military xfl something it was super yeah. weird and like shady looking but i don't know right now i think it's looking good for us man as, as us usfl stands it's looking great yeah so, like i'll go back to the the statements that they released in september mm -hmm. usfl was business as usual let's carry on like we'll worry about it you guys yeah. just keep worrying and while it seems like the xfl has been like oh hold on hold on slow well, down slow down like see, we're not really signing we'll you a contract money. we're signing you into an intent to have a contract we'll have so that, that tells me um my only question is can we get 16 teams can we somehow work eight hubs that would be my dream uh, but i have a whole scenario i've i'm a football nerd when it comes to this where there's a, a minor league of an nfl and let's say the steelers and the patriots send their practice squads to the maulers let's say and cool. they they could send five and five just to get film on them, and then the rest of the roster is run by the Maulers and just carry on until eventually you have thirty two. The G League did that, and I think it's a perfect example. And I think NFL needs that. Uh, Steve Meyer came on the show, the defense back coach for the Maulers, mm -hmm. and he said the hardest thing is developing talent right now because if if kids yeah. aren't ready for the NFL it, by the time they're twenty two, and especially this generation because they had they dealt with covid and all that kind of stuff like they're lacking a little bit in development and the nfl yeah. is such a win now um oh yeah yeah attitude and and if you really go to college with the uh the transfer portal right mm -hmm. like those kids like they're not really developing because they're like i'm not getting playing time i'm just going to go to the other school yeah. that's offering me money oh, now dude. and then they're playing like stetson bennett and they're playing until they almost can take their roth ira yeah. out it's crazy yeah, where, where they can qualify to to run for president of the United States. Yeah, um, like like crazy. Bo Nix. Bo Nix, I feel like has been in college since forever. I, yeah, so like my entire my daughter's ten. Like I feel like Bo Nix has been a college quarterback the entire her entire life. Yeah, yeah. You you watched him. You like were hearing news about him in college back when your daughter was born. Like, well, Chase Bryce, right? Chase, Chase Bryce. He was great at Clemson, right? Or he was a backup, but like he, he was backup, a big recruit. But he came in and he like won a game. Uh, yeah. After someone went down, and then he went to. But then he went to Duke and uh, like uh, all this yeah. kind of stuff, and I'm like, or, or Appalachian State, and um, yeah. I think he did. I'm like, this kid is legit, 26, 27 years old, and yeah. I just. Uh, Which I mean, for quarterback is one thing. Yeah. Well, like a lot of the other players, if you're 25 and you're not on a practice squad right now, it's done. Look at Ruben. Yeah, Thomas. well, it, it, even with quarterback, like you're not going to develop into a starter at 27, no. and and they're not getting reps after college. So that's the reason why those kids hang on. I get why Stetson Bennett stayed. You know, he he was yeah. a god at, at in Athens for you know one two championship. He didn't he never has to pay for 
I guess it's a bad joke, but he doesn't have to pay for beer in the state of Georgia. Like he can walk into yeah, any bar and be like, he's paying now, <laughs> but paying for all that beer. But I, I, I just feel like if the league can develop into a developmental league and be the spring that. league and it's basically the G League of basketball um, or football, um, I think it would be perfect and this merger would work. As long as we have Mahler Gambler football in the spring, this spring, I don't care what it looks like. Me either. I would love it. But yeah, uh, the last little bits, you know, I, I, you're talking to basically the GM of the Mahler. Sometimes I talk to the GM of the Gamblers. They're not hearing stuff. Right now, we're not hearing anything. Nothing's coming. The coaches don't know what's happening. I have players that I've never spoken to uh, that are reaching out to me asking if I know. So I say just act like it's not going to happen. You know, take the Mark Thompson approach right now and just say it's not going to happen. But Webb did bring up earlier, uh, maybe before the show, that the Players Association for the USFL is meeting this week. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Maybe soon after Thanksgiving, we'll hear some news. So I think next week could be a big week, you know, not just for food, but then leading into some cool news. So we'll see how that goes. But do you have anything else on the merger yourself? No, I just want it over with. I'm, I'm tired. Of, I say it every week on Hammer Time. I, like, I'm tired of legal legal jargon and, uh, you know, trademarks and all this kind of oh I just want God. football. I just want GM. Like, I like the GM stuff in the offseason. Outside yeah. of that, trades and signings and, you know, evaluations and all that, coaching moving. I could care less about like I care obviously, but like yeah. it's not something I'm like, oh, I need to find out more about that. I, I want to know about the players. I, I absolutely agree. Schemes. But with that, should we bring on here? Let me find the oops. <laughs> bring on KB. Move you up here. And we move on to the final segment of the show because this has been a pretty long episode. Uh, we were long winded. I'm sick. I've been coughing. I haven't coughed yet. Knock on wood. Um, but this has been a good episode. I'm loving it so far. So let's finish it with a bang. KB, I know you said you came up with one like five minutes before we got on here for the show. I'm Hold on. feeling it's a good one. I want to know. Hold on. I know we're a little rusty. We, we got to hit that one, man. We, we haven't gotta... had videos in a while. Some transitions. I love <laughs> it. KB, are you there? Can you hear me? Now I can. can now. Yes. Oh, now my goodness. I've been talking. Oh, well, now we got you. It's <laughs> totally my fault. All right, mother. What is your Mother. Vibe? My mother-in-law. I, I mean, it, it, it's it's legal now. It's legal. It is legal. So, what is your blind side for us? All right, guys. So... At this point, it's like totally public knowledge that uh, Todd Haley's not coming back, right? Yep. yep. All right. So, do we hope that uh, we get somebody from the outside? Or do we hope that uh, Jaron Horton, 2023, assistant, assistant coach of the year, Gets an opportunity, gentlemen. He was Man, the winner of the 2023 the Jaron Horton Assistant Coach I, of the Year Award. I mean, he's like, is, after him. is he ready? Do we do we want this for him? I think do he's we want ready. somebody from the outside. Like, let's talk about it. So before the show, KB, I'm like, you got your your blind side, and she's like, it's going to bother Ace more than anything. Obviously, it didn't, right? Oh I'm yeah, it was first. a lie. Go well, first. I I I don't 100%, recall. I don't 100%. recall saying that. I recall. I recall Ace I said saying that. that. Oh yeah. Okay. Right, whatever. But it, she told me that it was going to bother you. I did, but it literally came to me like three minutes before we started taping this. That is a good blind side. So she told me it was going to bother you more than me. I didn't know what the question was, but I love the question because one, I know he's in a great place right now in the league. Right? He's under his dad. He's in charge of a lot of things. You know, his dad is fairly hands off, more of just a leader where he's the one behind the scenes really making the things move. And I think he could right now. He could step into a head coaching role and he would do great. I think he would. Um, but I don't think the league is ready for that yet. What do you think, Webb? 
hundred percent, he's ready for uh, the position. I'm. I. He. There's not one thing on the Maulers that he's not involved with. Offense, mm-hmm. defense, offense. coaching, um, roster moves. Uh, they didn't have a GM for a little bit. He was making the moves. You know, Kirby kind of was taking a step back last year. He didn't make the moves. Ray is involved with a lot of decisions, but it's talking to your dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. Like it, it's not. It's not like probably a lot of like consultation. Him. Like, hey, dad, this is what I'm thinking. Yeah. What do you think? Should we pull the trigger? Obviously, I, his dad has the last say. But I don't know. A lot of the moves you feel the mind of Jaron Horton. You know, the mad scientist. You feel that he is the big hand happening in those things. I think he's ready. Uh, I think he's still a little young for the league to say, yeah, take over the Memphis Showboats, especially after you just had Todd Haley, who is an incredibly well-known name in the football community. I, I, that's my I'm s- I'm super conflicted because I, I truly think he's ready, but yeah. like I love seeing him with his dad. And I love seeing him. Like, I don't think the Maulers would be the same without him. They would not. So I, I am really, like, personally, I'm, I, I'm super, um, I, I'm totally in his camp, but I just don't think the Maulers would be the same, with, same without him. And I don't know that they're ready to let him go yet. So we can I agree that he's the best. Option. Young young coach in the league. Yeah. Uh, like under, under, under Hands 40. down. He, 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 Hands he's down. the best. Yeah. Dude, I'm blown away that NFL teams aren't calling him to come be their defensive coordinator right now. Yeah. Well, I'm blown I, away. And, and also, like, he's, he's kind of recruiting. When you're recruiting, because they all make the same money, right? Mm-hmm. You're recruiting yeah. the players. So, any, like, Dorian O'Daniel, you know, he was Super Bowl champ. <laughs> you know, that he got him to sign. To replace Tez in theory right now. Um, Overton, another example, right? Yes. My, he he, 100% deserves it. I think Memphis is a tough job. I think I think he kind of fits Darling. with Carnell Lake because Carnell kind of runs that Steeler defense that, that Dick LeBeau, it's not exactly the same as Jaren's. But um, so it kind of works. I think Carnell Lake's one of the better – coordinators in the league that can run an organization one of them that are close so if they are going to hire within who do you take do you take the guy that's already in memphis or do you take the the assistant in pittsburgh um me personally it's, i would i would, I would I would take jaron horton any day right well yes. um, i think at this point they take from the team i think they would promote internally but i i, th- I think they already have the name i th- I, I think honestly think they already yeah. I, I think they're waiting until yep. all this merger talk goes away. And I think the head coach is probably already working with uh, Rosano. I, that, that's that's my personal, like, I have no fact behind it. I just feel like they're making moves still. And I, I think they already have a candidate in charge. And if the XFL loses four teams, for, which is what the rumor is, there's four head coaches already out there without jobs. Jaron's got a job. Yes, it would be great to be the the head coach, obviously, of an organization, which is basically like the team president in this league. Like, yes, I know. Typically, in franchise sports, the GM kind of runs all the the decisions there, and they fire the coach. But here, it seems like the head coach yeah, exactly. runs everything. Oh yeah, the, the G the GM is basically totally like a fancy word that. for scout. Yep, yep, it, yep it's yep. a fancy word for scout. So. Yep. Right, right now with the gamblers, uh, like I'm going through these teams and thinking their coordinators and everything. Like the gamblers, I, I, I think Chris Wilson could do it, but he's not anywhere at the level of Horton right now. And I don't think he'd want to. Um, I mean, Chris Wilson, he ran a great defense last year. Honestly, uh, he has a Super Bowl, you know, ring. But I think he doesn't want that kind of responsibility. I don't think he wants to be a head coach. I don't think he's working up the ladder. I think he's gotten to the top and now he's just kind of enjoying life. You know, he has a son uh, who's getting into coaching. I think he likes being a coordinator and being a little more hands off. Whereas Jaron is that hungry guy, right? And he wants to move up. And I think those are two pretty different things. Yep. I love that Chris Wilson's on the gamblers, though. 
Yeah. And like the stars coordinators, like they were, they're tied to Bar Andrews all the way through. General yeah, Steve, mean, Steve Smith is already the assistant head coach in New Jersey yeah. with Mike Riley. Like, how much longer is Mike Riley going to go on for? Like, maybe forever. <laughs> I don't know. He's a great guy. Like, seeing him okay, again dude. was like one of the highlights. Um, Wearing a crocheted scarf. Awesome. Um, yeah, and no, then the, I, like the breakers, like they get a new defense coordinator. So a flip run ran the offense. So are they like? I think if it's not Carnell Lake, Carnell Lake, I think they hire from without. I mean, I outside, outside of the organization. But if I, I had to pick, if if I if I was Moose and I was in charge, I'm picking Jaron Horn, a hundred percent. He he <laughs> checks every box because you talk about a developmental yeah. league. He developed into this. He started as a DC, then became the assistant head coach, and was basically running the team. Now he he's running it with his dad as co-pilot. Really, that's really what they are, co-pilots. Um, I going through Carnell Lake's the only one that I can think of looking at all these teams that I'm like, all right, I I understand that pick. He's a little bit older than Jaron, but and he's already there. That that's the big thing. He's already there. But uh, already there, already the has the recognition. The XFL, I was, I was the just XFL did say. hire that coach for the uh, the Vipers, um, after their season, and he's only been on a job for three months. So is that part of the negotiations? Like, hey, we brought this guy. In? I don't know. We can go down that rabbit hole. Well, I was just uh, going to say that, like, um, it sounds like you're voting for like an XFL coach to take over to for Todd Haley, and then. Uh, you know, Jaron stays with the uh, the Maulers, but it doesn't sound like that's what you're saying. My my dream, my dream would be that they win the championship this year. The he wins with his dad. He, he wins. Yeah. He, he wins with his dad. Yeah, and his dad can go play golf because we all know yeah. Ray talks about golf every single time he could. <laughs> and Jaron takes and Jaron takes over. Yeah, and they just keep the uh, rolling. That's the dream. Yeah, but that's I agree. Okay. You don't know how many times a head coaching spot opens up, right? right? If he can go to Memphis and win, I'm all for it. Whatever. Sick. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I all got right. you, KB. I mean, it, I got, yeah, I mean, I, it's, like, it's, it's been six weeks off. See? See? I nailed you. I nailed you. It's, uh, it's complicated, but I, I, love, I love the conversation. Yeah. Well, that was a fantastic blind sign from our lovely producer, my mother-in-law, KB. Uh, and this has been a fantastic episode. First one back in a long time. And we hit multiple things. We went through a lot of names. Uh, and it felt good. It felt like a good one. It was a long one. It's the only show in the world that's dedicated to the whole league that hits the whole league. Like, I know there's Holy shows that, that, like, we really, I know we're we're considered, like, pony haters. But actually, if you rewatch us, we compliment them all the time. We just don't root for them. Out of them. I just don't yeah. like him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, real recognized like real. Like Zach like Potter is an R like he, he does a great job. Like Zach That's Potter, true. no matter where the gray lines are, Zach Potter will find them and he does a great job. So doing a great that was a slight dig, but okay. All right. Well, this has been episode 31 of USFLA. Um KB, you got the uh, outro ready? <laughs>